Hey, sorry about that. We were experiencing technical difficulties. I brought out some pottery to show you. Another thing is I can't remember what you asked me. <laughs> um, actually, um, I, maybe I'll just answer questions now. Now would be a good time to answer questions, right? I love morning here. The sun is coming over up over this, the sunrise over the stock tank. Hey, okay, I put the Wi-Fi back on. Um, I hope this works out better, but everything here is just really unreliable out in the country. So um, you're here, Michael, and where is the person? And who was the person that said, can you show me your pottery? So anyway, um, there we are. Is that better? Okay. So, oh, you were. Okay, good. Okay. So let me show you my favorite recent. I'm sorry. I'm shaking the camera. My arm's getting a little tired. I'm holding it. Here, I'll put it up again. Although I don't like the view from down here. So, I, there's something about my chin I don't like when... <laughs> Love. So, I love, I love the way this bowl came out. That, <laughs> you can eat some serious cereal out of this one, can't you? I could see that, but this is a glaze that I can only get from my studio that's in town. And so I don't use it all the time. So I'm saving up some pieces to take down. Thank you. Um, the edge it's warped the it's not perfect thank you um i i this is my first bowl that i ever got this large and it wasn't perfect and it started to <laughs> while i was building it it started to collapse a little on the sides because the clay's real wet and so it started pulling down like this and if you so immediately i picked it up off the uh the pottery wheel and it sits on this round disc and i turned the disc upside down and let it get its form back together it dried it upside down for a while, like holding it. It was propped up on some stuff and it didn't perfectly reshape. As you can see, it's like, I don't know. Everybody else, everybody I show that to goes, it's perfect, it's fine. But it's like, um, they, I see what's wrong with it and it bugs me a little bit, but not so much because the dripping of the, uh, that kind of teal turquoisey blue dripping down here is just so, pretty and unusual and this is a pumpkin this is called pumpkin which is a very matte glaze and so you can see where it starts to shine where this um, dripping glaze gets involved with the pumpkin glaze and the inside of course is beautiful yes uh, yeah you know that people say oh it has character well you know I have flaws too so I have plenty of character myself so it's like me would you like to adopt me <laughs> Okay, so when I when I do one glaze, I try and do a few pieces of the same glaze. And so here are some. This one, however, I love this shape. Okay, and and the nice the nice thin walls. I love the shape and the thin walls and um, and the way the pumpkin. I got I went further this time. I took a risk and went deeper with the dripping because the dripping could. I mean, it's hard to say how far it's going to drip, but I love this one. <laughs> right? So I sell these, and um, this one I labeled at $24. My friend Linda told me a great way to figure out the price of things, and it's been working for me. It's, it's the simplest thing of all, because the larger the piece, the more time it takes you to do everything, and it, the harder it is to do, and the more supplies you use and everything. So just multiply the height by the width. So if it's three inches times six inches, and my math is correct, that would be an $18 bowl. And then if it's six inches by four inches, then it's a $24 bowl. So that's how I, that's this one. I said, it says 24. So I assume it's close to um, six inches across and four inches tall or, or something, you know, whatever else adds up to around 24. And then if I put a lot of extra detail work into it, then I have to charge more. So today's picture um, I'm not sure I can throw the whole the sides on the wheel, but I'm going to try. And then, um, then I'm going to hand build the handle on, and I'm going to alter it in some ways. Maybe put decorative stuff in it. And I'm kind of sorry about that. Um, and then here's another one. And as you can see, 
Each one is a little, each one is a little bit smaller than the one before it. What? Uh, ask me that again, Michael. I couldn't see it. I'm sorry. The print is very small. I'm super blind. And uh, <laughs> pottery is good for that. I don't have to stare very closely at things. Um, it, have I ever shown you guys these? Can you see the thickness? These are my thin glasses. I have, um, I have another pair of glasses for emergencies that I got for much cheaper because they didn't compress the glass. And my friends were the other day was like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize I totally... Wait, there it goes. Ah! Why can't it just leave? Why can't it just leave your, your question or whatever? Why can't it just leave it on the screen a little longer? It's driving me crazy. I took my glasses off and then you, then you posted it. So I couldn't see it and I couldn't lean forward fast enough to see it without my glasses. I have um, about pretty close to 20-20 vision about this far away from my eyes. My vision without glasses is 20 slash 2200. Is that backwards for you? You want me to write it backwards? 20 slash 2. I can't, I can't write backwards. Okay. So, um, so where were we going? So I've been, um, instead of focusing my energy on YouTube, where I wasn't feeling great about the results. Okay. I, that's why I've just, you know, I wasn't, um, I've, I've been like working on a lot of things. I, my class is actually uh, teaching kids and adults pottery, watercolor. I had a drawing class and the kids, oh my gosh, the difference from the beginning of the class to the end of the class, how they saw differently. It was amazing. It was amazing. I had them number all their drawings so you could see the progress and hopefully word gets out that I can teach people to draw because, because drawing is awesome and it's a great skill for so many reasons just to just to design, you know, if you want to design some, something out of your head or you want to capture something that's realistic, how are your website sales going? I have had zero website sales in ages. So I just don't even do anything with it. I mean, the website doesn't like it's, there's no point in me going out there and adding new product to my website because nobody visits it and nobody buys stuff from it. So I don't even know what's up right now. Don't even care. Um, I used to do Etsy. I do, I do not enjoy Etsy at all. Etsy is Etsy's a place for crafters to be cutthroat and sell undersell their work to the next. You know, if, if you want to get ahead on Etsy, the best thing to do is sell the cheapest stuff you can, and tons of it. And they also, um, I don't like the process of setting up something on Etsy, and I just feel like there's almost too much competition out there. So. What I'm finding that people want right now, as opposed to more stuff, is experiences. And I think people are willing to pay for experiences. And that's why I've, that's why I've changed my focus with my, instead of like trying to sell so much pottery, um, which I would love. I mean, that would be my favorite thing, I guess. No, I, I do like teaching though. Um, but I think it would be awesome if, if I could just make whatever I wanted and people would just, oh, I want that and just give me money for it because that, and then I would, um, you know, pay off the last few of our debts and we could go on vacation <laughs> uh, with actual money that we actually owned that wasn't on loan from the bank. That would be like dream come true for me to, to get ahead of this whole thing. So, and it's coming. I'm sure it's, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be great, but this is where I am right now. So let's, let's be honest about that. Yeah. So the pro when I first started my classes, and I know you're probably all going to scream at me because I, I don't have a concept of money. To me, everything is so expensive. That's like when I put a price tag of like the big bowl, the big one, when I put a price tag of $45 on this, I'm like, who has $45 to spend on a bowl? You know, I really think that way. And then I say, um, and, and it's not, I don't think it's that I'm like so cheap. I mean, I want to pay artists what they're worth, but but when I think about like, when I thought about art classes, I was like, how am I going to break into this market? How am I going to get people to come? So I started my art classes at $7 per session, no supply fee. And I got, I got people to show up. And then I raised it when I realized, uh oh, um, my first, after my first month, I looked at the cost of the art classes and then the cost of supplies and that I was going to have to bring in more supplies. It was so cheap. $50 a couple. So now, okay. So pottery classes have to be broken up into two sessions. 
Do you have Instagram or Twitter? Yes, I am T H E S I L V E R S M Y T H on Instagram. I'm on Twitter as Silversmith, but I don't look at Twitter. I don't go out there anymore. I used to make a ton of sales on Twitter. I met some amazing people. Actually, one of them contacted me yesterday about a ring. But here's the thing. She goes, how much can you can you make this ring for me and can you do it super cheap? Yes. No. I can make a ring. I can't make it super cheap. So so I said that, you know what? I can't. I can't. I we're just can't do it. Can you can you can't send you. Um did you ask me to send you some photos of your pottery? Um Sure, my email address is on my website under under the contact page. It's silversmith.com, spelled the way I spell silversmith. That's a, I will send you some on Twitter. Um, I don't, I don't have my login. I don't know what my login is for Twitter. Um, and my Instagram has lots of pictures of my pottery. Do you make pottery also, Nicola? Um, I guess that's what you're telling me. You're gonna send me pictures of your pottery. I would love to see that. So, yes, I make, oh, that's awesome. I can't wait to see it. So, um, yeah, well, you, you know, you can email, well, email is hard, isn't it? Because some file, photo files are so big, they don't, they don't get through, right? Um, yeah, let me see if I can find my login for Twitter and uh, I'll try to go out there and check it. So, yeah, I don't, I don't do Twitter too much anymore. It stopped making me money. How are you feeling about Trump lately? Okay, you know what? Let's be honest. He's that he's that embarrassing uncle, you know, that you hate you don't want to run into at the family events. He hasn't been doing too bad. You know, I mean, he's done some good things and some bad things, and I and let's let's just let's just hit one thing. Let's just hit this whole immigration debate, debate you know, and the burden that the people immigrating to this country who are um, not here legally, not even for a minute, didn't even try to get a green card. Those kind of people, the kind of people that sneak in and then try and take advantage of the programs and say, everybody deserves to come to America and we're hardworking and we're not gonna sap off anyone else. Why don't we, let's be honest and look at these statistics and I think they do. And you know what the, the liberals are doing um, and Part of me, I'm half liberal and half conservative, so I fit in the libertarian group here. So, so they tell people, they, uh, the media is telling people what to get upset about. So they say, Trump's keeping children in cages, which A, they're not cages. They've divided rooms with fencing, okay? If, is that a cage? Uh, perhaps it is, perhaps it is a cage, but if it is, then Obama did the same thing. And so it's very disingenuous to suggest that Trump was the one that had something to do with that. And I think, yeah, you know what? I don't know what would happen in an election tomorrow. I think because I don't think people are thinking. I don't think people are thinking for themselves. So anything could happen and we could end up with a Bernie Sanders or, or Bernie Sanders himself. And that would be pretty devastating because Bernie Sanders uh, I'm pretty sure he thinks Venezuela is a model country. Like, oh, they just didn't do socialism right. Like, if you just do socialism right, everything's going to be okay. Well, it's not okay. Okay? Look at the countries that got involved in the EU and how the richest country is gets all the benefit. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm afraid that this country is going to uh, turn out a lot like Argentina. I feel like every democracy just as a pattern every democracy always ends the same way just like the Roman Empire as soon as people figure out that they can vote themselves money from other people then they then they they think they can improve their position when in fact the people with the real money are never going to give it up and so we have this system or this crony capitalism type system which isn't even real capitalism but we have people uh, monopolies taking advantage and all of us, all of us become slaves to these people. 
the Amazons and the Facebook and, and we do it willingly. We know what's happening. Like I know Facebook is dirty and I know Instagram is listening. And, um, it, if my mic is on, which I continue to forget to turn off every time I stop using the mic on Instagram, uh, that it listens and it will put up ads based on the things that I'm talking about, because what does it want me to do? It wants me debt enslaved. This whole, the whole way the system works out is they want us thinking and they promote what ideas and what pictures they serves, whatever agenda these big giants do. Their agenda now is they know you don't have any more money, but they want you to spend more than you have. So they're going to show you when your friends go on vacation, they're going to show you more pictures of your friends on vacation because then it makes you think that everybody is living that way. Oh. Uh. True. I wondered about that, Michael. Um, he said, you only think you can turn your microphone and your location off. So, yeah. So, I am I mean, I'm not really happy with the way things are going. And that is one reason why we prepare as a family. Like, we make sure that we know how to grow, grow our own food, at least some of it, you know, at least something. So that if something, if things go wrong, um, that we have, we have some food to fall back on, you know. And if... Um, and some people, Lynette Zhang for one, is talking about the mortgage reset. She said when the, when, when, our, when the U.S. dollar finally collapses, it is only worth 3.99% uh, of what the U.S. dollar was worth in the 70s. So, hang on. Ugh. I don't want to look at that, Michael. Yeah, they know where you've been. They know what your interests are. Every book that you've wanted to read. Amazon knows about it. They keep a record of that. They have a profile of all of us. Okay. And as we look, as we learned from Facebook, your profile is for sale. You're the product. Amazon knows us so well that we're also a product to Amazon. Like it's a two way street to the seller. Amazon, look, we have all these people who look at our, who look at Amazon. We have all these people who, and we know all about them so we can advertise your product directly to them. And to the seller, it's like, wow, that's great. But when the seller goes home at night and thinks, I'm pro I'm a product when I go out there. So they're the people who are inside Facebook and who really know um, what's happening, like why they're doing this. Like not all of it's insidious. I mean, I understand trying to sell something is not technically insidious. I mean, if I want somebody to buy a piece of my pottery, I don't have, I'm, my whole mind is not wrapped around, maybe it is. My whole mind is not wrapped around, oh, give me that money, give me that money. If it's a bad product for that person, if it's going to hurt them in some way, I don't want them to have it. Okay. Banks don't act that way. Banks don't go, we know credit cards are a bad product. We're going to sell it to you anyway. Um, if, if I, if I marketed something, if I made something that I thought was, um, of terrible quality, I wouldn't sell it. Oh, which reminds me, I have a piece of news. On uh, two days ago, a lady came to the house and she is a rabbit breeder and she bought one of my rabbits as a pet for herself. I've complained about this before, but you know how expensive it is for me to ship something overseas? It's insane. Um, but people from other countries can ship things here for extremely cheaply. I mean, the stuff that comes from, you can order something on Amazon from China. It'll get here in a couple days. And it's like pennies. It's like cheap, okay? And the quality is usually pretty cheap too. The good thing about my bowls that I say, like, here's my product, my bowls. I also, I also make sterling silver jewelry, but the return on investment for the sterling silver jewelry is not good. And I've spent years failing and I've finally, I finally decided, you know, maybe I need to fail faster when I try something new. Okay. But the bunny thing, I'm getting off topic. Ah, I hate that. Um, re I got to rewire my brain. Maybe I should have eaten something too. So I'm going to go in a few minutes, but I just wanted to say that, um, I, I sold one of the bunnies and I sold her for less than I wanted to get for her. But the bunny had, um, her top teeth and her bottom teeth weren't perfectly lined up. So they were like this a little bit. So this tooth wasn't rubbing the teeth. And, and so the side of the tooth grew very long and grew down like to her gum line. So when I was inspecting her to find, you know, to verify, is it a girl? How are its toenails looking? Does she have ear mites? None of the above. She looks great except for that tooth. So I took nail trimmers and the teeth are very soft 
they snap really easily. So I took nail trimmers and I snapped off the long part of the tooth. And then I contacted the lady who was talking about buying her. And I said, I'm sorry, I can't sell you this rabbit because she has her teeth grow extra long. But she said, don't call this rabbit, meaning, or don't sell it to the butcher or whatever. She said, um, sell, sell her the cult. So now I have somebody who will buy any that, I, that are not um, show quality. I have a way to sell them without, um, without having them just become someone's dinner. So that's good because you can end up with an awful lot of rabbits and you should have a plan of what to do with them if you're going to raise rabbits. So my son and his friends selected uh, two of the largest bunnies and um, I think his name is Poco Cordito, <laughs> which means Spanish for something fat. I don't know, the big fat bunny was. And then the other one is um, Spartacus. The other Spartacus. So we're going to keep two boys. Wouldn't it just break off? It should break off. What she said was give them apple sticks. So my husband went out last night to make sure that they had apple sticks to chew on. You got to use a, a, a twig that's not poisonous. Duh, right? Apple sticks are not poisonous. So um, the bunnies can chew on those and file their teeth down a little bit. So she'll be okay. She's, she's going to be loved and everything will be fine. Now my other stock are breed stock. Um, I have three more bunnies to sell. They are boys, meaning bucks, and the I have made a flyer with my phone number on it and those little tearaway pieces, and I'm going to go put those down at the feed stores to see if I can sell off the other three. And I want to do that before I go camping. I'm back. Hey, Li hey Laura. You almost got called Linda. Laura, you missed this earlier. So um, we have created a two-part sign yesterday. My husband's putting um, eyelets in the top and the bottom and we're going to use S hooks so we can turn the sign around when we have eggs available. Now that will, um, I don't plan on actually like putting this sign out front because we don't get enough eggs for that, but I thought, eh, maybe I'll sell my sign. No. But here, let me catch it. Let me show you the big part of the sign. So this is, don't worry, I didn't write them backwards. That's the phone doing that. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, that sign will be, um, who knows, maybe I should sell my sign. I really, really enjoy sign painting. Like that's just really relaxing for me to just, I paint a line, if it's not perfect, I paint it the other, I paint, you know, I, I correct it with the other color and then I paint back this color. Okay, yeah, so we have, we only have um, nine chickens that are laying right now and only two of them actually got to work yesterday. Unfortunately, I mean, the babies, obviously, they don't lay until they're six months old, almost to the day, which is really cool. Anyway, I need to go get um, something to drink and something to eat. And I think I've spilled the beans on almost everything that I've been going through. <laughs> um, and I, I want to do more live streams. And I really, in the summertime, I really like morning for live streams because um, I can be by myself. Bye, Julie. Take care, honey. Oh, thanks, Michael. Always so kind. Okay. Bye, Laura. So good to see you. I'm glad you came back. Uh, I don't know if you still watch any of my videos, but some of them are good. Bye. Yeah, everybody try and catch up on my old videos. <laughs> Take care, and I will see you soon. Bye.